mediatic representation of the other on games, and the potentialities of homoludens. Hatred, racism, prejudice, and discrimination are part of the history of Homo sapiens. According to Harari, 2019, these feelings arise with the imagined realities that we create, differentiating and hierarchizing the other for their domination, which is exercised, according to Santos, 2008, through colonialism, capitalism, and patriarchy, to which Brazilian black feminists like Gonzalez, 1984, and Ribeiro, 2017, will add racism and sexism. This article presents the hypothesis of change in the way of thinking of humanity, closer 2009, from the cause-consequence relationship of the time historical linear logic of the written text towards the immediate meaning of the images through magical, imagetic, circular thinking. From them, the article discusses the concept of homo ludens, Flusser, 1967, the man who plays, and how the materiality of physical experience with playing cards can help break stereotypes to teach the history of black Brazilian heroines. Understanding what unites us as a species and what separates us even so is essential to understand the cycles of hatred and racism that lead to conflicts between populations, communities, ethnicities, beliefs and brothers. Creatures of culture and language, Homo sapiens managed to outperform all other animal species, including at least five other human species. This happened due to the creation of culture and the improvement of communication languages which Yuval Noah Harari, 2019, will call the Cognitive Revolution. It is from this time that the first imagery representations date, certainly also the first religions, and probably the first social stratifications that hierarchize and differentiate one human from other. The second big difference, and this is definitely unique in our language, is the ability to convey information about things we've never seen or touched. Fictional stories, myths, political ideologies, religious beliefs, legal systems, etc. It is only through faith, the certainty of the things that we did not see, that we can say, for example, that one ethnic group can enslave the other, that women must be submissive to men and that my nation culture is superior to yours. Czech Brazilian philosopher Willem Flusser will think of another category to define what separates us from the other species, including humans and other animals from the 20th century onwards, where Homo ludens, the man who plays. Anyhow, all of our understanding of the world is codified and capped or transmitted by language and throughout media. At this point, we would have two levels of reality. The first reality, which would be the facts witnessed at the place and time they occur, and the second reality, which is the oral, visual or written narrative of these facts. These realities need a media to be capped by human brain. Primary media the human body itself, secondary media, based on physical supports, and tertiary media, dependent on electric equipments. Each media has a different dimensionality, passing from the corporeal three-dimensional experience of the first reality to the two-dimensionality of images on flat physical surfaces to the unidimensionality of the text, the lines, letters and words up to the no dimensionality of the electrical pulses. From the scheme developed here, it is possible to infer that each time the message goes from one of these levels to the lower one, it loses quantity and quality in the information it transmits. Obviously, you get to know the reality of a particular community, both ethnic and cultural, much better if you live intimately with its members for a while than watching a movie, reading a book, or laughing at a prejudiced meme on a group chat. 
It's from this idea that the Palestinian Edward Said recriticized the portrait that Europeans and later Americans made of the Middle East. The Indian Gayatri Spivak, 2014, will claim the right of speech of the subaltern. The Portuguese Boaventura Souza Santos, 2015, will situate the global south beyond geography. And the Brazilian Djamila Ribeiro, 2017, will explain what the term lugar de fala, place of speech, means. Now, we live in an era of visibility, appearance, image, especially digital and electronics. The way of thinking that shaped our current society and the scientific epistemologies we use in our academic works, however, was the same that emerged with the invention of writing and became hegemonic with the rise of the great religions based on sacred scriptures, the time historical linear way of thinking. It is a type of reasoning that takes into account the present, the past and the future the cause and the consequence. The prehistoric way of thinking is still present and fundamental for the development of our subjectivity, since it has been used since before literacy. On the other hand, it's different. It is based on the turning of the gaze, on the drawing, painting, photography, or video that brings at once the meaning of what is seen. That is why it is called by Flusser, 2009, Magical Magetic Circular Way of Thinking. People are attached to the magical fascination of images, reinforcing their own prejudices and are not convinced by rational arguments, whatever they may be. If the images are produced and or broadcast by those who do not know the first reality of the facts, they will always be manipulative and manipulated. Initiatives for inclusion in the gaming industry are fundamental to combat the prejudices and stereotypes and to bring diversity not only for producers, but also of representations. In the last decade, we have seen a trend in the electronic game industry of bringing themes such as racial, sexuality and gender diversity to relevant titles considered mainstream. There are great examples such as the franchise The Last of Us, Nintendo's Animal Crossing, which released the option to customize the skin tone of a character, and FIFA games with 12 women's football teams. The constructions of subjectivity obviously have to do with communication, education, and in our time, with images that we consume and in which we want to mirror ourselves. As our lives and relationships are increasingly experienced in digital environments, this is where we build it. Even so, in addition to digital experiences, We also need three-dimensional physical contact between people and with unidimensional material, such as printed books, and two-dimensional, such as, for example, playing cards, to improve our knowledge about the other, breaking down prejudices and stereotypes. Currently, there is a new generation of Brazilian black feminists, such as the writer Jadida Reis, author of more than 70 works in Cordell literature, and books such as Twister on a Hot Day, A Hole with My Name, The Legends of Dundara, and her best-known work, Black Brazilian Heroines in 15 Cordais. Cordell literature is a tradition in the northeastern Brazilian region that allows easy, cheap and extremely popular access to historical information and stories from real and fictional characters. Its simple language, its materiality and the colored pages on which it is printed, and its distribution in street fairs, terrace spots and all kinds of popular events make the Cordell a powerful instrument for speeches of impact on these populations. When a feminist and black author like Ahais uses this media to tell the journey and the struggles of black women made invisible by the official story, she also uses all the weight of traditional images and lithography, woodcut and other techniques to further enhance the messages. The story and the images contained in them, however, went beyond the sequenced and numbered pages to a new playful materiality, a card game. 
In 2019, the teacher and master's student in new digital technologies in education at Uni Carioca, Alexander Ferreira Francisco, decided to use the texts of four Brazilian black heroines from the book by Arraes, 2017, Antonieta Barros, Carolina Maria de Jesus, Laudelina de Campos Melo e Tia Ciata to develop in its initial version a game that mixes physical cards and internet resources, Contae. Francisco was not the only one to transform the lives of important Brazilian black history characters into cards. Perla Santos, a black teacher at the municipal elementary school, Mario Quintana, also developed a set of cards to help in the teaching of Afro-Brazilian history and culture. The teacher realized that the children like to play bafo, a game in which they beat their hands over one or more cards to turn them over and decided to ask for their help to develop a totally original deck. The text of the mini-biographies of Dandara, Kim Pafita, Aqualtuni, Teresa de Benguela, João Cândido and others were written by her and the images were painted by the students, who also cut the cards to the size and format they were used to play in. Francisco's game, certainly due to his research on digital technologies in education, could not fail to use devices connected to the internet. Still, he was concerned with offering offline possibilities. Perla Santos, on the other hand, opted for a totally analogic production, involving the students themselves in the manual work of building the game with which they will play. It's a teacher-student dialogue that dispenses with tertiary media and is done entirely in the first reality. Texts and images, thoughts and information are mixed with tactile experiences, making the joint construction of knowledge a reality that will hardly be erased from memories. The game itself completes this interaction and makes the experience even richer. There are many researchers writing about the differences in the relationships of construction, transmission and absorption of knowledge in different media, realities and dimensions, including studies on gamification. For the majority, there is a clear link between the use of the internet and especially social media, an increase in hatred, intolerance, xenophobia, prejudice and also the denial movements. Thus. When the histories of our ancestors come out of the invisibility imposed by the epistemic violence of capitalism, colonialism and patriarchy, and manage to break the bubble of the algorithms brought up in society by authors with a place of speech, we have to celebrate and publicize. After all, the materiality of the cards passed from hand to hand, turned into baffle games or played in friendly competitions, undoubtedly improves our experience in primary media, three-dimensional, and in first reality, helping to form a richer, diverse, and profound imagery. When the pieces cut by hand on cardboard are part of a game, we become even more human, more distant from other animals, and also from the devices that surround us. The game, as Flusser 1967 says, is what distinguishes us from machines, as well as the physical contact of the senses. Therefore, we also made a point of using this article, not the final text published by him in the newspaper O Estado de São Paulo in December 1967, but the typewritten sketch on three sheets, now very yellowish, which were found in 2016 and donated to the Villain Flusser São Paulo archive, where they are physically available for public access.